Hey everybody, Adam Savage from Tested. I am in the Royal Society in London alongside Keith, their head librarian. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank Good you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, we have a magnificent object here. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, so this is uh, a regulator clock. Uh, it's a chronometer that was made by John Shelton in London in the late 18th century. Uh, it's one of several that the Royal Society purchased for scientific purposes. And this particular one is well known because it went on Captain Jane Cook's second voyage of discovery. This travelled on Cook's ship. That's right. Yeah, we think it was aboard Resolution. So, yeah. Wow. Okay, so explain what a regulator clock is. So um, it's a very accurate instrument. And, and originally what the Royal Society was interested in was the transit of Venus, the, these events where the Venus passes over the face of the sun. And if you take some very careful measurements, what you want to be doing is calculating one astronomical unit. And, and this is something that scientists were terribly interested in. And when you talk about precise measurements, precise measurements from two different places on Earth's surface? That's right. And four different places usually on the sun's surface. So they would look at when, when Venus just touched the, the face of the sun yeah. uh, and just as it was wholly in the sun, right. and then the same on the opposite side. So they, they had four measurements to work with, and they sent out as many observers as possible all over the world because, of course, you never know when it was going to be cloudy. So yeah. you, you wanted as many people out there making that observation as possible because it doesn't happen that, that often. And uh, so each of those people has to carry with them a chronometer of that's right. the so they, highest possible accuracy. They, they, that's right. They carry telescopes to make the observations. They carried clocks so they could time the observations. And uh, this is uh, one of those instruments. Uh, by I, the time of the resolution, of course, they, they revolu HMS resolution, uh, they were looking at different things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, it's a, it's a transit instrument. I, I remember reading accounts of somebody who had spent years getting to some remote part of South Asia yeah. only for it to be cloudy that day. That's right. There, there was a French guy who, who did that. He tried to make observations from the deck of a ship. That didn't work because he waited for the second transit. Yeah. Um, but legend has it that when he went back to, to, to Europe, uh, he'd been declared dead. His wife had married <gasps> someone else. And uh, it was, uh, science was full on in those days. <laughs> now, this is a pendulum clock. It is, yeah. Uh, and How? you can see this better maybe if I just yeah. open up the case there. Let me just get rid of the label for a second. Oh. So how would this have dealt with the pitching of a ship over thousands of sea miles? Uh, it wouldn't have. So, so um, they would set it up, and in fact they did set it up in this tripod arrangement when they landed. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, um, oh, so they would calculate their proper time from local conditions. Uh, and they had chronometers with them, but a different kind of ah, chronometer, which we'll see in a moment. Okay. Um, but yeah, the pendulum is what they would be looking at to keep an accurate measure. Uh, and you can see it's a, it's a bimetal pendulum. So it's, well, so explain yeah. what that means. These all this these rods holding it up they are of different metals. That, that's right. So because uh, temperature is going to affect things, so that they want to make sure they're getting the metal exactly, expands and contracts. Exactly. Yeah. So they wanted to make sure they're getting as accurate a measurement as possible. Uh, you can see the weights here, which is is the, the gravity which is driving right. the clock itself. And so the idea is that as one of these metals expands, the other is contracting, and they are yeah. canceling each other out, yeah. so that the length of this pendulum does not change. Doesn't vary. Yeah. Do you know how? little variants they were able to achieve? Oh, I this. don't for this particular instrument, but they were pretty good at it. And, and one of the reasons they, they were interested in this sort of question is because they uh, used pendulums to take measurements of Earth's gravity, 1G. Ah. So uh, one of the reasons that they used this kind of clock wasn't for timekeeping at all, but it was to, to look at gravity measurements. And in fact, um, this instrument has, a, has had a long life after James Cook. Okay. Uh, so it was used for uh, pendulum measurements, and you can see that because the front panel has been cut out. Yeah. Uh, they've put some ah, glass in there. Right. And you might just be able to see a dot there where they were, they were taking the measurement oh my in goodness. the glass. So they, they'd use a small telescope to, to look at very, very minor variations in the pendulum swing. 
So there we have it. I can open the face of the clock as well. I would as like to, um, um, is, now is that bimetal, is, was, am I right that that's Harrison's invention? Or? Uh, yeah, and um, it was taken over by a variety of other people as right. well. Uh, Henry Cato was one of the pioneers in this area as well. So you can see the face of the clock uh, a little bit better there. So uh, it's, it's very different from a conventional clock face, as we would expect with a, a minute hand and, and an yeah. hour hand. So you've got um, uh, a 60 minute Oh, hand. right, can look at that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can tell the time from this inner dial here. So we're at 12, ooh, about 12, 14, 13, 14, something like that, which is what that's telling you. And you've got a second hand around here. Wow. Now, do you have a, uh, a person who you bring in to clean and service this clock? Uh, this one hasn't been serviced for quite a long time because yeah. they're, they're actually very accurate. If you keep oh. them running, uh, they're, they'll, they'll run pretty much forever. Uh, it happens occasionally when uh, we're asked to loan clocks out. Right. Uh, that's when we have to start taking them apart slightly, yeah. making sure that the pendulum's stable during transportation and ditto when it gets to the far end for exhibition purposes. And, and I mean, speaking of that, it's astounding to think of this going on to Cook's ship, traveling yeah. tens of thousands of miles through all sorts of different yeah. weathers and temperatures, humidities, et cetera, yeah. and then them unpacking it and it's still being useful and accurate. Yeah, absolutely. There was an engineer called John Smeaton He's very, very famous uh, as really the first proper civil engineer. He's well known for building the Edison Lighthouse. Yeah. Uh, but he designed a platform uh, to, for these clocks so that when you go to the far end, it was a nice stable platform. You could put it on a tripod, mounting on a beach somewhere and start to take measurements. Incredible. Uh, and over here, we've got some of the chronometers they would have used to... Yeah, but just before we yeah, get yeah, please, to that, yeah. um, I thought we'd maybe like to wind it a little oh bit. Oh my goodness, um, yes. So uh, you can see there's just a little mechanism there, just to... If I just push that down, hopefully. That should just take out... Uh, it's not going to work today. Ah, there we go. So uh, the key goes in just there. And if you just give that a turn, you'll see this rising. It's this rising? Yeah, so give it a turn. <gasps> wow. And that's just bringing the weight up. So it's just bringing the weight up, yep. That's amazing. It's a very satisfying mechanism. It, it is, isn't it? Yeah. There's something very relaxing about it. And the tactile feedback, <laughs> the clicks of the ratchet. Yeah. I mean, there's a, I always submit, you can tell a lot about a maker by touching their yeah. creation and yeah. you can feel the, the gravity in this machine. Yeah, yeah. And that will just automatically pop back in time. No, you don't oh. need to do that, it'll pop back. Oh, it does? Does it itself? Oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> just incredible. It's also had a, a little mechanism, a little bit caught out the top there. Oh. So if you stand on tippy toes. Yeah. Oh, wow. It has been adapted for electrical contact. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And it's got a level built in? Yeah. Oh my god, what? So it's actually been adapted and used as a scientific instrument considerably. This, this was used in some quite famous gravity experiments in Dolcoth Mine, which is one of the deep mines in, in England. Uh, and at one stage it was apparently dropped down a mine. Uh, so uh, they're, they're revered instruments now, but the yeah. scientists treated them terribly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then slicing time into precise increments is literally like one of the oldest human endeavors. Yeah. Very good. Keith, so we, that's we, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's quite a thing, isn't it? What a beautiful thing. So we should, we should look at some of the smaller clocks. As yeah, well. yeah. So are these ship's chronometers? They are ship's chronometers, okay. yes. And again, uh, the ones that um, uh, were used by the second Cook voyage. Um, so these are by Arnold, another London maker. And um, these things were usually run in pairs. So one of them would be kept on Greenwich time. 
-hmm. one of them on ship's time. Now, when you say they were kept in pairs, is that also uh, a, a way of also checking their accuracy or confirming? Yeah, one of the things that the Voyager wanted to do was to test a variety of timepieces to see which was the most accurate. Right. And of course, it's an important question because longitude was very much in everyone's minds, how to work out their position. And one way to do it was through timekeeping. Right. So uh, the, the best accurate timepieces were uh, something that the Royal Navy really wanted for each ships. So they would have sent more than just a couple in order to be able to confirm which were the more accurate. That's right, yes. So um, um, these two weren't the only ones, but uh, they're an important set and uh, really quite, quite beautiful little things. Uh, we don't run these ones, uh, but they're rather nice to, to look at. And they are just gorgeous. Have a, have was, a was there a specific protocol on the ship for how these were stored so that uh, but these the ones would have been conditions. kept wound, so these, these would have been constantly wound right. to maintain the time. Uh, one of these was apparently dropped at Ooh. some stage, uh, and we know that because uh, there is an account of it. But you can actually see the difference between them because the enameling is slightly different between the two clocks, so they're not quite a pair. Hmm. Uh, and that means on one of them, the enameling has been repaired, oh. it must have cracked when it was dropped. So they're, so they're not a perfectly matched set. That's exactly right. Although they were, were made as that. Now, oh. what you can do is take these things out. Oh, no way. And oh, uh, take wow. a look at the mechanism behind it. And it's uh, quite a beautiful thing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, these haven't been restored at all, as far as we know. Really? And therefore, they're in, in the condition that they would have been originally used in. Oh, look, and, it's a uh, chain drive. Yeah. Now, oh, wow. Now, is that chain perhaps, is there bimetallic elements going on in here? Uh, certainly, yeah. I mean, so there are, are different metals going on. You mm -hmm. can probably just see from the finish yeah. uh, between the brass and the steel. Uh, and the steel. Yeah. It looks in fantastic condition. It's, it's not bad. It probably needs a light dusting, but apart from that, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's good to go. Um, do you know the reason the chain is wrapped around the uh, mainspring barrel like that? What, that? what advantage that gives? I think it's, it's a winding thing. I don't know what okay. the advantage is, but you would uh, uh, wind from here, mm -hmm. and uh, you can probably see oh, in yeah, the bottom of there. Oh, yeah, there's a winding there. hole. That's right, so you, you just pull that little wooden panel out and you've, you've got access to the bottom of the clock and that's how you wind. Got it. It's remarkable for its age and its history. Yeah. Wow. That chain is really something else. I mean, somebody manufactured every single link of that by hand. By hand, yeah, so every part of this would have been effectively handmade. They, they would yeah. have had, obviously, tools to work with, uh, primitive instruments by today's standards, but they managed a pretty good result. They really did. This is... <laughs> it's just thrilling to look at it. Keith, was there somebody on the ship whose job it was to maintain and take care of these? Yeah, so uh, the duties would have been shared out, but yes, someone would be tasked to keep these clocks wound uh, because otherwise the entire vo scientific element of the voice would be kind of negated. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, very important that you get your clocks wound. Wow, so I could imagine that if you have five or six clocks and then you've got this one in storage and mm. everything has to be maintained, that when the clocks start to disagree, yeah, you have a very tough job about figuring out which clock... Uh, yeah. Which clock is right and which clock might be wrong. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd find out when you got back home to Greenwich. Oh, course. yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's just uh, very, very difficult to know which one was right, which one was, was slightly out. Well, also, I would imagine, actually, now it occurs to me for the first time that if they go out and they come back and they read the variance between the original state and its return state, they, they could actually correct for some of their observations made in the field. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, uh, some of Cook's voyages have exactly that kind of table in them of how each clock performed. So you can you can look back and you can and actually look at the, the records and see how yeah. many seconds yeah. it lost over the months. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah.